As another edition of the Naked News. I'm, I'm dried up off the shower. Here to, what do you want to do with my hair? Anyways, there you have it. The Naked News. Sexy, sexy, sexy chat. I don't know. What do you want to say? Well, there you have it. You know. There it is. There it is. There it is. You know. I don't know. Can you see it? I thought it's out or whatever. There you have it. You know. There you have it. Well, why am I giving you the naked news? Well, you need to come to a full and complete understanding. That this body here was declared by white settler settled science. This body here, that body there, you know, that body there, does it look sickly to you? If I tell you it's 57 cycles, I ask you, does that look, body look sick to you? Does it look sick? I don't know. Kind of hard, but does it look sick to you? Sick, S-I-C-K. Does it look sick? Because Dr. Gamble, you know, Dr. Gamble, infect infectious disease specialist in Thunder Bay, tells me time and time again that this particular body has got HIV, AIDS disease, and it was first diagnosed in Vancouver by a different doctor. Well, does it look like it's got that horrible thing called Kaposi's sarcoma that Tom Hanks showed you in the movie Philadelphia way long ago when he was acting like he was someone living with HIV AIDS? Well, this is Bobby Burroughs and he's living with HIV AIDS and he hasn't taken that cocktail pill since I don't know I'm not exactly sure what the date was when I moved out of the CV Motel on Cumberland Street last fall it was before Christmas and it was after the summer so I don't know maybe it was October when I stopped taking those cocktail pills prescribed by Dr. Gamble and the doctor out in Vancouver and Shoppers Drug Mart is where you buy those exceptionally expensive pills that currently uh, you know the newest ones are fifteen hundred dollars a month out of pocket that you must buy because you're told by people like Dr. Gamble it's either you take those pills or will the doctor in Vancouver told me if I don't take those pills every day for the rest of my life within 10 years I will be dead of AIDS. So why am I taking a chance you might ask? The answer is it wasn't voluntary for me to stop taking those pills. The pills were left behind at the Seaview Motel. And I was never given to go and get replacement pills at Shoppers Drug Mart and I was given to never go back to Dr. Gamble again. Let's just say, if you're, ab if you're an Aboriginal person, do I look Aboriginal at all? Well, according to the story that's given to me by my birth parents, I'm not. I don't know where we're we going because that was blocked because of neural monitoring, electronic harassment, or let's just drop all that technology and just say evil intention by evil people. Anyways, whatever that story was, it's still around in consciousness, it was just batted out. But you know, uh, if you're an Aboriginal person, maybe you would say great spirit. Because that's what I say. Because I was taught that way of verbiage by one of my spiritual teachers. Great spirit. Spirit, in general. And spirit that I say is my God. 
does not have me on those pills. So me as Bobby Burroughs, it's just the way it was because I let go of controlling the body. So the body's no longer enslaved to my monkey mind thing up here. Inspired by a talk by spiritual teacher Matt Kahn, K-A-H-N. Stopping the Internal Conflict is the name of that talk, and it's on YouTube. And from there, Spirit gave us the snooze bar technique, which is you letting go of controlling your body. In the most easy way, you could just stay over there in bed. And what you do is when you have the urge to pee, you just relax the body. You all know how to relax the body. You just relax the body. Just relax the body and keep relaxing the body even though you're still getting that signal that you need to pee. Because what you want to do is tell your body. You've got muscle memory. You know, many people know how to ride a bike and that's muscle memory. Perfect golf swing of Doug Robinson, the insurance salesman. Bay and Algoma. Perfect swing. He doesn't really play golf, but one day he showed me a swing and it was the perfect swing. Perfect swing, and he was a perfect athlete in freestyle skiing. Moguls, why is it that I can't even tell Doug Robinson's story about him being an expert in moguls and freestyle skiing in Thunder Bay? Because even stories, innocuous stories about people, I'm being blocked from talking in general. Doesn't that seem demonic to you? It certainly does to me. Anyways, that's what we're talking about, that the body, we call, it's blocked, it's blocked, it's blocked, the words are completely blocked by the devils. Right now, but you can figure it out. Muscle memory is what you're going to surrender. Your monkey mind's control over your body, you're going to do. No more monkey mind controlling this thing. The muscle memory of the body, spirit itself, will be freed from domination from the monkey mind, the ego monkey mind. And this news bar technique is how you do it. And that's all you do. So, when you're lying in bed, now, naturally there's my gut, you know, it's like that's pushed right out. Do I look fat to you? And do I look like I got HIV AIDS? Well, how long after not taking pills do you think it's that, you know, Kaposi's sarcoma should be bursting out on my skin? Eight months? Well, eight months later, there I am. Anyways, the Bobby Burst technique is like, you know, you lay down, you fell asleep, and then you wake up. Well, I don't know. Before you wake up, you actually come back. You come back into your head. And you first wake up, and your eyes are shut, and you don't wake up with a start normally. It's not normally like that. It's only a slow thing where you kind of wake up inside and then you can wait and then eventually your eyes will open up on their own if you wait. You're not in a rush. Like if you wake up and you don't have to pee, you just wake up and you're here. Oh, okay, I'm here and I seem to be like so much awakening up. And I don't have to go to work today or I don't have to go to work for two or three hours. So I don't have to do anything and I can just sit here. And that's all you do. But if you have to, to pee, if you feel like you need to pee, instead of you forcing your body to get up, you know, you know, and then running into the bathroom or something. No, don't do that because that's you forcing the body because you felt the need to pee. You want to say, well, I feel the need to pee. So you, body break, we call this body break because that used to be the Canadian commercials for participation, getting exercise for your body. And they called it body break. So, you know, that's what we call this thing, body break. It's like, okay, okay, well, you inside or you're doing, okay, body break, I feel like we need to pee. So, instead of me forcing you with my mind power and my will to get up and go pee, I'm just going to relax. I'm going to send signals to you spirit of the body that I'm not going to get this body out of bed. It's you. And it's your job to get it up out of bed. And the muscle memory of the body is being told. Muscle memory of the body. You know how to move this body. So, you move it. 
and take it to the bathroom and pee this body. And for me, eventually it did. I don't know, maybe after three hours of waiting here. I didn't have to pee that bad and I think I fell asleep again. But that's what you do. And you wait and wait and wait. And sooner or later, for me, the body got up and peed itself without me, you know, which you normally think of you doing. Because a lot of times we think, well, we are the mind and this is the body and we tell the body what to do. And that's enslaving the body. So we want to free the body by doing this and just stay in bed, you know. And that's the snooze bar, you know, it's like, you know, there it is. You know. If it goes beep, beep, beep or whatever, then just hit the snooze bar or just turn it off because you are not going to follow the clock that says you got to get up. You're going to wait for the body to get up on its own and pee itself. And then don't take control of the body. Actively just send messages to the body if it's asking for anything. It's simply relax, relax, relax. And you might need to help it breathe. Because what I find is that if the body needs any help at all from what I consider the mind, is conscious breathing, especially when I'm under heavy demonic energy. I just I don't feel well sickness. Sometimes the body has got to work very hard to breathe. It's very hard. It's like running a marathon with very heavy energy. So, you know, if I do do anything, it's just adding my help to the body to help it breathe. And that's the Bobby Bros technique, and you just do it. And then you want to go and figure it out. Well, then what happens is once you do see that your body, all of its own muscle memory, knows how to get up out of bed and pee itself, that your job as running the body is over. And that's where you're going to have a lot of problems because you, as the mind, have got all kinds of things scheduled for this body to do. you got to see clients for your business, Doug Robinson, or Barbie Banks, Google Burroughs, whatever your name is now, my sister. Or you got to go to your teaching job at the First Nation, Kathy Burroughs Mallon, that you told me that you got this job. And now you tell me you're not doing that job. I don't know, is it the end of the season? Or I don't know. It sounded like you weren't even doing that job that, you know, you didn't... Pers I don't know, because I get nothing but lies from my sister Kathy Burroughs Mallon Lannan, realty and permanent supply teacher, permanent alcoholic, permanent one percenter living down there at Sunnyside with all your rich people, and your friends at Amethyst Harbor, like Mr. Tarinus of Tarinus Construction Roadwork or Tom Jones's brood of Jones Construction or the Dougal of Dougal Media, CKPR, CHFD, and all these other things, the source, the race source newspaper. I don't know. I don't know. I always get up talking about all you stupid one percenters. And all I wanted to do was show you that, you know, clearly the settled science a white settler doctors in lab coats says that I have HIV AIDS and that I must tell you all that I have it according to the laws of Justin Trudeau in Ottawa. I must tell you in advance before I can have sex with you. But that is my duty under Canadian law. And once you know that, then it's just that many people are going to lie and say, after the fact, well, he didn't tell me. And even if I get all kinds of documentation and I file it with Queen Elizabeth's court or something, and I, they don't have a registry or anything where you put all this stuff on file for public use, it's just that, do you trust the government not to change documents? I don't. I don't trust anybody. X-Files told you that. Trust no one. So it's just simply, you know, as long as these laws are on the books of Canada, that HIV AIDS is a reportable sexual transmitted disease, and you must let everybody know before you engage in anything like that, that that's what you are. You're typhoid Mary for life, body works. According to white settler, white settled science. No proof is no way. I don't know how long before you think that I'm starting to start looking like I got wasting disease or something. I don't know. What do you want to tell me? Donald Trump told you it's fake fucking news.
And where did we learn about HIV AIDS? It was originally called GRID disease from San Francisco. It was given to us by mainstream news. American News, ABC, CBS, NBC, Canadian News, CTV, and CBC, Canadian Broadcasting Company, owned by the Government of Canada, Crown Corporation. Your tax dollars at work telling you that this grid, gay-related immune deficiency was the newest COVID-19, and it was the newest Zika virus, and it was the newest monkeypox virus. The newest hepatitis B, or hepatitis C. The newest cancer virus. The latest, the, the latest computer-designed virus in Wuhan or something. Endless fucking bullshit and lies, and then you see the picture. I don't know how many pieces of evidence of fake news it takes, but when you look at Anthony Fauci and somebody else showed me on Instagram a picture of Mother Teresa of the Roman Catholic Church in India, the Catholic saint, and Mother Teresa and Anthony Fauci have identical faces. And then you see videos on places like YouTube, openly and freely available, that show you a deep fake, deep, deep fakes of people like Obama, where it's Tupac Shapur doing his holographic dance of the supposedly dead man. Deep fake is computer generated characters and they told us that Carrie Fisher, Princess Leia of Star Trek was dead, the actress, but they used her image and digital animation to bring her back to life on screen. So it's just that everything that we learn about from mainstream news can and is doctored and lies. And that's what we call the empire of the snake because the snake is from the book of Genesis who showed Eve the tree a good and evil and the fruit thereof the apple that she ate of and she gave to her boyfriend Adam and he ate it too. And that was the great fall from grace in the strange Jewish history Jewish Roman because Rome Pontius Pilate was the Roman governor of Palestine and that's where modern day Israel is so at the time of Jesus Christ it was the Roman Empire that ruled Israel. And what does that mean today? I don't know. Just some little facts you need to remember. Because if you think, you know, that the Christian Bible is Jewish, it's Roman. Because those books that were written, I don't know, 100 years after Jesus, 200 years, whatever. Within that time period, Rome ruled Palestine. Rome ruled Jerusalem. Pontius Pilate was a Roman governor of that place, and they were the senior government. There was no one higher than Rome. So those books in the Christian Bible are not really Jewish. They're Roman. They were approved by Rome. And later on in the story of what happened in early Christianity, officially the Roman gods, which were based upon the previous big civilization, ancient Greece, though those pantheon of gods, of the Greek gods and the Roman gods, were all had to be kicked out. Because there's things like the Council of Nicaea, which had to decide which books were going in the Bible and which ones were going out. Because there were many other books that claimed to be stories of Jesus that weren't allowed in, whatever. Some versions of the Bible include books that aren't in other versions of the Bible. Anyways, that Bible, who you knows? was... Was it Constantine, Emperor Constantine, that officially made Christianity the official religion of Rome, the Roman Empire? It just comes around to the idea that, you know, Jesus was a Jew. Well, he wasn't actually a Jew. Modern day, they say he was a, an Essene, E-S-S-E-N-E. -E. And they were very communal. It sounds a lot like the longhouse tradition of 
the Aboriginal people of British Columbia, according to white man's history that we learned in white man's government schools. White man's history is all based on fake news. Because we learned about the longhouses of the Aboriginal people from white man's history books. Not Aboriginal storytellers. Anyways, if that was the case, then the Essenes were very much like the longhouses. And we're told they didn't own private property. You know, it was shared in the community. It's like the kibbutz that doesn't seem to be in Israel anymore, but we were told when I was a boy that it was communal farms. I don't know all these stories. Anyways, as you can see, I was told by white man's white-coated, white settled science doctors that I have this dread disease. Now, you might say, well, I'm just going to tell you that the electronic harassment on me, they flipped a switch and instantaneously they gave me what I call fibromyalgia. Horrible pains in my muscles, permanently contracted spots, and it just doesn't work right and whatever. But, you know, I don't think fibromyalgia is a, a symptom of HIV AIDS or full-blown AIDS. You know, it was never said. It's just that they never talk about Zika virus anymore. It seemed to be very important. I don't know. That was less than 10 years ago. It's just they make up these phony baloney viruses as a scare for all of us. And we're sheeple and we're bu we buy into it because we're brainwashed into it. And then there's peer pressure of all the people. And we were told in high school. That's called peer pressure. And be an independent person and look at things with your own mind, free of other people's opinions. And make sure that you've done the self-help work to come to a full and complete understanding of the depth of lies. And don't forget then, if it's $1,500 a month out of my pocket for HIV cocktails, anti-retroviral cocktails, $1,500 a month, who does it go to? It goes to Big Pharma. Big corporations like Pfizer, P-F-I-Z-E-R. And if you look up on mainstream Google, Pfizer is a repeated criminal corporation that has been fined, not millions, but billions with a B of dollars for being criminal. And that's who it is who really profits from HIV AIDS as a real disease of a virus that you can't see even if you use a light microscope. You have to use an electron microscope in order to see virus particles. And when I did my Bachelor of Science in Biology at McMaster University, an Ontario government funded official school that is so advanced that they have a nuclear research reactor on campus, at least it's labeled that way, well, when I was taking my Bachelor of Science in Biology, one day they walked us into what was supposed to be the electron microscope lab room, and there was this big old beast, this big metal beast thing. And I said, that's it? Did they turn it on? No. Did they demonstrate it to you? No. Did they explain the physics how, for, how, for the very first time, you could calibrate this machine to see theoretical particles that are smaller than anything you can see with a light microscope. It's just an unbelievable story that they continue to force you to believe because you've got to know that kind of information when you're in taking high school science, when you're being brainwashed into being a, a sheeple. Because they didn't turn on that machine and there was zero evidence that it was being actively used by the science professors at McMaster University. And let's go with 1985-1986 when I attended there. So there is no evidence that I have seen as a Bachelor of Science in Biology. There's zero evidence that 
electron microscopes are real because they did not demonstrate that thing. It just looked like a movie prop to me looking back on it. So those fuckface devils have pulled the wool over the eyes of everybody that electron microscopy, I can't even say it because the demons don't want me to talk about it. So for them, it's top, 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 top into snake soup where you go into lake of fire and you can boil in a big iron, cast iron pot of hot boiling water and you, snaky people, all chopped up and cubed as snake meat going in there. I'm going to throw in some onions. Some white onions chopped up and maybe some green onions chopped up to start off my snake soup. And then we're going to have Laura Ingalls' mom from Little House in the Prairie tell you, well, it's stone soup. Because if you don't have any carrots or anything to snow, to snow into the pot, then you can throw stone in there. And you can say that it contributed to, to the soup. And if enough people put vegetables in there and the stones are at the bottom, then you'll have vegetable soup as a community project by Mrs. Ingalls of Little House in the Prairie. Carolyn Ingalls. I was trying to get her name, Carolyn, and earlier it was blocked because there's people there playing tennis with me. And they showed you this in one of those recent movies about the chess guy, the chess master from America who went to Moscow to play the Russian grand champion of chess. And in the audience, there was a psychic guy, and Russia, Russia is known as producing and cherishing their psychic people. And there was a psychic person who used the power of his mind to interfere with the American chess player and doing his calculations on how to do chess. Unfair, isn't it? A third party getting involved. And that's what's happening right now. Third parties who are using whatever they're using, technology or whatever, definitely evil intent to ruin my life and to stop me from telling the truth. And don't forget, in ancient Greece, Socrates, a teacher of wisdom, was forced, possibly by the Athenians, people of Athens, maybe it was. Whatever city it was, you can look it up, Socrates, S-O-C-R-A-T-E-S. -E he was forced to drink poison hemlock. Poison hemlock soup to die so that he wouldn't tell truth anymore to the youth. Hemlock, present, is where Bonkers Semenik of Great Lakes Paper lived with his family, including my, are you my friend or my enemy and my frenemy, Daryl? I don't know, because right now Daryl Semenik doesn't want to acknowledge that he knows me. I don't know, because cognitive dissonance, Daryl, you took science and psychology, it's called cognitive dissonance. That is that the facts that you hold on to, your cherished lies, are being brought up for you to examine. And it's because of me telling the truth. Well, that's all it is. It's just that you've adopted beliefs based upon lies. So throw out the lies and don't get buttered about it. Just admit that, you know, inadvertently or by your own choice you chose lies to put into your heart and you live a lie when you put garbage into your heart chakra so you got to clean that shit out and all you're going to do is use the i am affirmations of the ascended masters you know i am the truth and you just keep affirming that in your heart in my heart of hearts of hearts of hearts i only want truth true 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 truth and not a shred of anything that's a half truth and definitely not lies i am the truth I am love. I am the resurrection and the life. And these are the I am affirmations. You know. And that's how you program yourself to get rid of the lies of the white settler settled science. Please acknowledge that you watch this video by giving me a thumbs up or giving me a thumbs up or giving me a comment or sharing this with somebody else and saying, here he is. Here he is. You know, there he is. The white guy who, the white settled science, white lab coated 
scientists. Oh, they say he's got HIV-AIDS. Does he look like he's really got HIV-AIDS?